sulfide measurement in water. Depending on water pH, sulfide can be present in three different forms and we call all of them as total sulfides. The pH, of course, affects the form of sulfide. The method developed by Ralph Kortlewisch in 1985. So if you use this method, you can cite this publication. According to this method, copper sulfate reacts with hydrogen sulfide and forms copper sulfide and sulfuric acid. While copper sulfate solution is light blue, the copper sulfide in water is brown in color. So this color is related with the hydrogen sulfate concentration. And when there is less concentration of hydrogen sulfide, the color is lighter. The method says that there is a correlation between sulfur concentration and color formed. What to do in the laboratory is to prepare copper sulfate solution in 50 millimolar hydrochloric acid solution. To do that, put a little bit water to a place, then add 1.53 milliliter of pure hydrochloric acid. If you have 37% of hydrochloric acid, then you can add 4.14 milliliter of acid. Then copper sulfide is added to form five millimolar solution. To do that, depending on what you have in your laboratory, 798 milligram of copper sulfate or 1,248 milligram of hydrated version of it is added. After adding and dissolving these chemicals in distilled water, the color turns into blue. Then you can fill it 2,000 milliliter. And from this day until the end of time, this solution is called sulfide buffer solution. When your buffer solution is ready, you can start your measurement. To do that, take your sample and take a little bit of distilled water. Firstly, take a test tube and fill four milliliter of sulfide buffer solution and one milliliter of distilled water. So this solution is naturally is blue in color. So you can use this mixture to adjust your instrument that is auto zero. So firstly, adjust your wave line to 480 nanometer uh, and then make an auto zero. This is something like you are telling your device if you see something blue or something else, forget it, it is not sulfide. Then you can start your measurement of your sample. So to do that, again, take a test tube and four milliliter of sulfide buffer solution and fill it and one milliliter of sample. When you add the sample, the color automatically changes to brown, uh, as I showed before. Then you can re-measure at 480 nanometer. Let's assume that your absorbance is 0 0.5 to make a calculation example. For the calibration, you're going to need deoxygenated water. So you can boil it and let it cool down, but keep it away from the atmosphere while cooling down. So you don't want oxygen in it. So the court rubbish suggests that you can do this procedure in nitrogen atmosphere. So then of course you're going to need something sulfur in it. Court rubbish also suggests that sodium sulfide is, is used for this process. I suggest that you prepare 100 milligram sulfide solution for your calibration. To prepare it by using this sodium sulfide, so you can see the calculation is as shown. So basically you're going to dissolve 749.1 milligram of sulfur sulfide octahydrate in one liter of distillate deoxygenated water. So when you prepare this solution, then you're going to have your calibration solution, which is 100 milligram of sulfide. So you can dilute it to, to form your other calibration forms. And these are the concentrations. If you perform your sulfide test, then you can have the absorbances for each calibration solution. These absorbances are assumption absorbances and I hope you get similar results. When you have concentrations versus absorbances, then you can use an Excel to conclude your calibration. So you can write your absorbances and concentration and draw a nice graph like this. The Excel also gives you the equation of the trend line and the re square value. And you can also rewrite the equation here. And you can see that the X axis is the absorbance and the Y axis is the concentration. So you can write concentration instead of Y and absorbance instead of X 
So you see the coefficient here, the coefficient is 100. That means if you multiply your absorbance with 100, you can have the concentration. So our assumptional absorbance was 0 0.5. So in our experiment, our concentration is 50 milligram per liter, we can say. So I wish you good luck in your experiment. If you have any question, please write to the comments. I would like to answer and bye.